the bounty hunters. There is a deadly silence on the bridge of her ship as Divine Leader Thread's brow furrows. What manner of horror resists attacks designed to scar worlds? Where had this abomination come from, and why was it here? There was also the concern as to the human bounty hunters wielding shield-penetrating and axiom-resistant weapons that were capable of causing damage on such an absurd scale. She hadn't missed the multiple kilometers high plume of sand and, or the fact that multiple cities were now reporting earthquakes. That attack had been felt thousands of kilometers away. If they turn that level of sheer force against a city, well, there will no longer be a city. Divine Leader's thread, we are receiving an update from the Chainbreaker. They're shifting positions so that they may engage in further attempts to kill the beast. What's their plan? Thread asks. They are going to send the... Crimson Rain? A moment, please, I am requesting clarification. Her communications officer states, and then lets out an interested sound. They are inserting crimson hewers in full armor to deal with the creature at short range. They explain their reasoning in that no defense is perfect, and if it is hardened against bombardment, then surgical strikes are more likely to work. Crimson hewers used in a surgical strike? This is the first time I've heard of such a thing. Although considering the sheer scale of their opponent, then even their horrifying blades are more akin to scalpels. Divine Leader Thread remarks, I do see the wisdom in their intent, however. Prepare troop transports and get our teams ready. If the Crimson Hewers prove successful, then we will reinforce them to bring a swifter end to the beast. We are not leading this charge? One of her subordinates asks. If the Chainbreaker wishes to be the tip of the spear, then the honor is all theirs. Prudence and caution are equally valuable traits in a soldier as courage and ferocity. Thread remarks, Inform the Chainbreaker that we will be assisting in their attack in the honor of the first melee strike is theirs. Oh, that's cute. Hey, girls. Apparently the honor of the first melee strike is ours, Bike says over the comms as Vexa leads her fellow Crimson Hewers into the launch tubes. They secure themselves in in moments. It helps that the tubes have been specifically modified for them to use. Oh, really? That's nice of them. I suppose people get nice and cooperative when you go out to do something that scares the ever-loving hell out of them first. Vexed notes as a smile crosses her face. People say all kinds of hilarious things when trying to cover up their fear or awe. This one seemed to be a bit of both. It was almost like these Empire girls had never fought against a seemingly unstoppable and unrelenting enemy before. Bad form, that. So bright green blood, our armor is going to look all kinds of clashing after this. Do remember you don't have to paint the armor the same color as the blood. We're the Crimson Hewers, not the Bill Hewers. Hell, we don't even have to paint our armor if the markings look stupid. We just can't paint where we haven't had blood. That's not fully traditional, someone mentions in Vexa scoffs. Yes, because there's nothing more to our people than tradition. It's why we only settle for good Canador men and nothing else. The sarcasm in her voice causes a round of giggling. We're going to be in range in ten seconds. Brace yourselves, girls, Bike informs them. Bongani could probably hang a Canador man out to dry, one of her sister's notes in Vexa nods. Oh, probably. He tosses us around in our armor enough. Honestly, we'd have spread out among these chain breakers more, but we can still just barely keep up with one of them six on one. We'd need an entire clan to keep proper pace. I mean, look at what they're doing down below. An air truck against a monster that wears a fully functional warship? Good grief. Are they trying to seduce us? Maybe we should inform the nearest Crimson Hewer Enclave about this and have to compete with hundreds upon hundreds of our own sisters in battle for the attention of these men, the moment the rest of the galaxy learns for a fact that the rumors aren't rumors. It's time. Launching, Bike announces, and there's a whoomph, and each of them is covered by a halo of fire as they re-enter atmosphere with the tan and pale brown planet far below. Tiny traceries of green can be seen with the naked eye, and then their helmets highlight their target and zoom in. Well, damn, that's an ugly one. It'd probably look better disassembled. Well then, girls, time to make it nice and pretty. After all, we Crimson Hewers know style, if nothing else, Vexa announces as she hits her jump jets and adjusts her flight downwards to the cheers and laughter of her fellows. They form an arrowhead formation in the sky and accelerate downwards. 
The inertial dampeners and axiom baffling tech rev up as high as they can go, and they slam into the hull plating of the ship, just under the cannons, and the creature shifts and lets out a scream. It noticed them. Then a blaze of axiom infused ammunition crashes into the monster's face from the truck, and it forgets them to continue its chase. Several cannons fire an air farce. Being himself casually dodges the massive blasts, and in the craters are numerous burning hunks of slag and rapidly melting sand. All right, girls, time to get surgical! One of her sisters cheers, and Vexa whoops along with the rest as she draws her blade and rushes the nearest bit of flesh poking out, which in this case is the base of one of the massive cannons that just took a shot at Air Farce or Scaly and the new girl Sally. The blade sinks in nice and easy, and she wrenches it to the side. A splash of vomit green ichor sprays out and covers part of, of her chest plate. She's going to ignore that for later. It clashes badly with the typical blood red, which is a shame as green normally complements it. A bit more blade work and the tentacle at the base of the cannon has been badly damaged and is refusing to stop bleeding. So she sheathes her sword and then sinks her reinforced and empowered claws into the side of the cannon and begins to pull. The groan of metal the snapping of tendons, cracking of bone, and the sweet sounds of muscles giving up and breaking is downright musical as she rips one of the cannons directly out of its mounting and sends it tumbling over the side of the monster to the desert sands below. That's how it's done, she shouts and there's cheers around her. She turns to check them and smiles to see that her sisters are working good and hard to make sure that when this monster lands, it's only going to be walking in circles because they're taking all the legs off one side and giving it a shave of all its smaller tentacles as it tries to protect itself and fails badly. An alert pops up in her helmet. Hey, big girls, I know you're having fun, but the playground is about to get a lot more crowded. You have Empire reinforcements inbound. Try not to scare them off, Bike says, and an indicator shows where a quintet of troop transports are inbound. All right, but tell our new playmates that this is a messy game. They've got to be ready to clean some of the nastiest things imaginable out of their armor when this is done. I'll pass on the good news, Bike replies, and she chuckles. The cannons above swivel to take aim at the oncoming transports, provoking an increased barrage of fire from Air Force's dinky little truck. And for just a moment, the cannons turn back to him before deciding that the oncoming transports are a larger threat. Vexa leads her girls towards the base of the cannons, but something stops them. A force starts pushing them back, and while there is the telltale sound and sensation of axiom, it's something else. Its focus is behind them and pulling rather than pushing. Vexa turns and brings her cannons online. She lets the pulling force aim the barrels and then unleashes twin bursts of plasma directly into whatever the hell is yanking at them. The heat is outright devoured by the abomination, and she and her sisters start to skid towards whatever's pulling them, despite the magnetic grips in their boots and the stability spikes they've stabbed into the deck plating. Switch to lasers! Melt whatever's dragging us! A dozen beams of a pale pink energy lance towards the source, but it's blocked by a shield. Grenades! The spheres bounce and roll towards the source. A chunk of deck plating pops up to reveal a fanged maw that bites into the grenades before exploding with concussive force and shrapnel. The pulling force relents and they all stagger back to a normal posture. Whatever that was, it's broken now. Possibly dead. Whatever the hell that mouth was. Bike, inform our friends to be careful when they land. This thing is full of surprises and damn near just got us. Vexa sends. Sending it. Anything else? Yeah, get a little more dodgy, the cannons are getting faster. We're going to see how many we can break, but I promise nothing. The plating is popping open with all kinds of... Vexa starts to explain before one of her girls jumps away from the deck, plating suddenly launching out skewering spikes. Nasty surprises, like the spikes Clara just dodged. So the enemy is aware and actively fighting? I'll let them know. Its responses are all over the place, though. No kidding. Hey, by the way, what did Scaly see when he was grabbed by this thing? Let me ask. I'll be broadcasting it to everyone, by the way, including your new playmates. Bike says, That's just smart. Ignorance in a fight is a good way to lose it. Vexa replies. Slytherin's eyebrow goes up as his communicator goes off. 
he decides to have some fun. Hank's hearses, we get you there dead on time. Nice. We're landing forces on the beastie. You're the closest we have to an inside man from the thing. So what's the skinny? What's in the house on top? Bike asks. Oh, so that's why half the legs fell off and a cannon went away? It's hard to make out even cannadors on it at this distance, Slytherin says casually before clearing his throat. Well, in the house is a single room, or I was pulled into a single room. I don't know which. I stuck my smallest drone in there and got grabbed. The room I ended up in had eyes everywhere. They were alert, aware, and watching me. Stuck near the back wall was a strange sort of tree that looks like three different people turned to wood and grew together while fighting in slow motion. They spoke maybe two words at a time before another cut them off. Things like hate, pain, and grief were said. The last thing it said to me was flea child. One of the voices, or maybe even all three, doesn't like the idea of hurting children, and I count. Anything else about it? It was like being held in the hand of an angry god. That thing had total power in that room, and I have no doubt that it controls the greater monster. What or who it was before I can't say, but that thing is suffering. It's having a miserable time, Slytherin says. So this is a mercy killing then? Damn, anything else you can think of? The drone I sent in was tiny, smaller than even the tiniest tritite coin. They noticed it right away the moment it entered the house. I don't think any amount of stealth will fool them, Slytherin says. Noted, I'll pass it on. We're going to get some eyes in the air to see if we can't zoom in and get a good look at the controller of this creature. It's clearly designed to retaliate to large-scale attacks, but doesn't have so thorough an answer to surgical strikes. If we can get Tang or J3 to snipe the brain, it'll be game over. Right, if you can get me my enhancement jacket, I'll be able to control the drones with ease. I'll give you full battlefield vision. Sounds good. We're sending a shuttle down that can fit the truck. Air Farce, if you can hear me, you're about to get an upgrade. We don't know if that thing has FTL engines, but we're going to make sure you do. Make sure it's one with kinetic weapons. This beastie ignores everything else, and we're still the bait. Air Farce leans over to say, Read you loud and clear. We're also loading it up with drones, so Scaly can deploy them when and where he wants. Nice. Does this mean I get a bigger gun? Sally asks. Yep. Nice.